Hello, wonderful people. It's Casey. Welcome back. I'm doing another spread in my Pocky Box art journal. This is my color palette for today. It's a little bit Valentine's Day, even though it's April and it's currently snowing outside, so I guess. I'm going to start with my Golden Fluid Acrylics. And today's spread is being done on a piece of scrapbook paper on the left and an old green map on the right. I covered the map with white gesso because I really didn't want that showing through. And I covered the scrapbook paper with clear gesso because I really wanted to see the pattern. I'm starting with a light green, which you may be thinking, why are you covering a green map with green paint? But it's not the same color green. I wanted a much softer green and I really wanted to cover up the map even more. I really like this green. It's almost a celery green. I kind of dig it. I've got my page all covered so you can't see the map anymore. And now that my page is dry, I'm going to use some kind of a golden yellow ochre color, which really isn't on the color palette. The color palette is more of a, almost a little bit peachier color, but I just use the color palette as a guide. And I'm taking my baby wipe and covering the background of the scrapbook page because it's a little browner than I want. When I started using these color cards, I was very strict with the colors and I would only use the colors on the card and I would use all the colors on the card. And it's, it's fine, but there are so many cards and so many color schemes that are similar and often I'll have ideas that need other colors. So now I just use the color card as a guide rather than an instruction. Now this swirly pattern here I really like and I want to copy that on the other page so I'm taking my golden ochre color and my thin paintbrush and I'm trying to copy the swirls as much as I can. Now they don't need to be exact, they just need to be close enough so that the eye recognizes that the pattern is similar. I am looking at the original pattern as much as possible, but I'm painting it kind of backwards upside down, so it's definitely not exact. But it just needs to give the impression of swirls so that it looks pretty much the same on first glance. Instead of doing it in this golden color, I could have also done it in the brown that the original pattern is in that would have worked too. Next, I'm taking my brown Posca marker and I'm just going over some of the pattern in the background it kind of got lost underneath the paint and I wanted to bring it forward, but I'm not going to do the entire pattern, which is all over the page. I'm just going to do some of the pattern. And then I'm going to copy it on the other side just for symmetry. I don't want it completely the same as the other side, just enough to add balance and add interest, but not a complete copy. And this is just a little piece of construction type paper. Um, I got these papers from a scrap pack at Walmart. They sell it with the scrapbooking papers. Um, there's all kinds of different sizes and different kinds of papers in there. And they're just the perfect size for working in my journal. 
So here I'm just tearing off some pieces and putting them in and balancing them again. Um, you don't have to have symmetry between your pages, but I happen to want to do that in this spread. Symmetry is nice, it guarantees that your page will be balanced, but sometimes asymmetry is nice too. You can have asymmetry and still have balance. I had a hard time getting that to exactly match the top of the page. It kept wanting to slide on me. Yeah, I struggled with that a little. I got there in the end. You wouldn't think gluing down a piece of paper would be so difficult, but for some reason this one was. There, we finally got it. Now I'm taking my gardening catalog. Gotten all kinds of gardening catalogs in the last month or two. Because it's supposedly spring, <coughs> Mother Nature stopped snowing. And going with my color scheme, I'm cutting out some things that are red. I decided on fruit. There really are not a whole lot of things in nature that are red. It's pretty much fruits and flowers. Once in a while a bird. And this is a piece of mesh bag from, I think it had potatoes in it. It's nice when you can use things that are just normally junk and people throw away. It adds really nice texture. I'm taking my matte gel medium to glue it down. <clears throat> I'm using matte gel medium instead of Mod Podge because I thought the matte gel was going to be better at getting it to stick than the Mod Podge. This was actually a lot trickier than I anticipated it to be. I've used a piece of mesh bag before, and I don't remember it being so obnoxious to glue down, but it kept wanting to pop up on me all over the place. I got there in the end, and then I glued my fruit over the top. So now we need something else, so I'm going to take my red paint. And now I'm going to paint some flowers. I'm just freehanding flowers and basically I'm kind of starting in the middle and just making petals. This is a really easy way to make flowers. The details will get added later, but doing it this way, you don't have to be precise. You don't have to worry about <clears throat> the petals or, you know, when you, when you do flowers, if all the petals are even, it looks really unnatural. So you want to have petals that are all different lengths, different shapes, different sizes. So when you use this method of painting flowers, they're automatically all different and organic looking. And you want to make sure they overlap a little bit. And then I'll put some on the side. 
because I have the apple on the bottom, which is bigger than anything else, I put the flowers near the top to balance it out. And I didn't wait for the um, matte gel medium to dry before I started doing this, so my fingers are kind of sticky <laughs> on the bottom there. I don't like being sticky. Now I have all my flowers done, and it's time to add detail. So I'm taking my ink pen, and I'm starting with the center, and then outlining the petals. I really like using color first and then adding ink over the top for the detail. It works really well with watercolor too. Now just like making it organic with the petals being all different sizes, with the centers of the flowers, um, having them exactly all in the center of each flower makes it look artificial. You want to have um, some of them off center. And I'm taking a pink and adding highlights to the leaves, or the petals, sorry. And there you go, flowers. I'm adding some swirls with the green because I needed some more green on this page to go with the green in the background of the other page. And I added swirls instead of leaves to match the swirl pattern in the scrapbook paper. I started with the light green and it was too light. So then I went around with a darker green. And it still looks a little bit weird. So then I went with an even darker green. I kind of added some darker colors in toward the petals where there would be shadow. And finished up by outlining it in ink. And now I need to put my sentiment in. And I'm using these block stamps, which I really like these block stamps. They're a good size, and I like the font. But unfortunately, I can't line them up. Even if I exactly line up the bottom of the block, where the stamp is on the block isn't the same on each one. So I have to purposely try not to line them up. And the C came down a little bit lower than I wanted, but that's okay. It's, it's really whimsical. And there it is all finished. I think it turned out really cute. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.